welcome everyone to what will be a very energetic little interview. My name is Tom Poland, beaming out to you from Sunshine Coast in Australia. This is Marketing the Invisible, and I'm joined today by Annie P. Ruggles. Annie, g'day from down under. Very warm welcome. Where are you hanging out? I am right dab smack in the middle of the U.S. in Chicago. So hi yeah. from yesterday. Because it looks like Paris at midnight in the background. You know, that's because of my Van Gogh. <laughs> Right. Uh, no, but that, yes, that faking it, it yeah. faking France well here in biz, <laughs> in drizzly, just... like drizzly gray Chicago. Yeah, well, I can understand why you might want to be in Paris at midnight then. <laughs> so um, Annie P. Ruggles, in addition to being just a ball of fun, has this really, really very, very interesting little novella. And we're going to tell you more about that in a moment. But it's just so done, well done. If for no other reason, you guys are going to have to check it out to see how a pro, how a master of intrigue gets the message across. Title today, though, I must carry on, is, is, is uh, well, let's go to the bio first. Annie is the founder of the Non-Sleazy Sales Academy. She's the host of Too Legitimate to Quit, author of The Coach Who Would Not Sell. <laughs> and that leads us, Annie, nicely to the title, which is The Coach Who Would Not Sell. We're going to kick off the interview with question number one. Our time starts now. Who is your ideal client? Exhausted over deliverers, largely coaches, but not right. all. Super small businesses who have such a deep passion for service, but find that that passion feels like it's in direct opposition with selling and profiting, raising their rates, negotiating, firing clients, all that good stuff. Annie P. Ruggles, you know your clients well. Exhausted over givers. Uh, most of them female? Mm -hmm. Mostly female, but there are lots of men and non-binary yeah. folk. But women, because yeah. women are more often conditioned in caregiver roles, have a lot of caregiver guilt, which really can impact their selling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and impacts not having boundaries and, and over, over, over giving and, and so on and so on and so on. Yep. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, question two, over six minutes left still, plenty of time. What's the problem you solve? I call it the martyrdom of overmarketing. And what that is, is what many, many, many service-based businesses do. We've been taught, and rightly so, that we need to give and we need to solve problems and we need to show up mm. for our people in order for them to know, like, and trust us. But if we do that over and over and over and we never actually ask for anything in exchange, we're expecting <laughs> martyr flip, we're expecting marketing to take us across that finish line and change departments for us. We won't. Marketing and sales are different departments. Departments, even if they're all you. So we waste so much time and so much money over marketing instead of being able to receive and give in turn. Right. And, and so they're almost the opposite of the the people who do nothing but sell, sell, sell. They don't give value. Yes. They just buy, just buy this. These, your, your people are give, give, give and never make an offer. Give, 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 right. give, burn out, die. <laughs> okay. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes left. Let's move on. Uh, well, you've introduced the answer to question mm -hmm. three quite well, actually, there. Um, what yep. are the typical symptoms? How does someone know they're looking at their business in their life and they're going, OMG, uh, Annie P. Ruggles is describing me. What's going on that gives them the heads up they need to find out more about what you do? We already talked about burnout. That's a yeah. biggie. Poverty, that's a huge one. If your business isn't growing or if you're spending more on your business than your business is making, I'm not talking about when your business is brand new. It takes time for things to take root, right? Yeah. But yeah. if you're exhausted and you're just chucking, chucking, chucking marketing out there, that's mm. one. Uh, if you have a great on paper brand that isn't converting, you have the shiniest, the funniest, the wittiest, the best, and no one's buying it. If you're spending an unsustainable amount of time on your marketing and don't feel like it's getting you anywhere, if you'd love to delegate that marketing, but you have no room to, and most clearly, if you are becoming resentful of the people you're trying to serve. Mm. If wow. you are starting to hurt because they're not giving back to you, that is a clear sign that you're either undercompensating yourself, not mm. asking enough, or both. Why wow, the world needs the world needs your solution, Annie P. Ruggles. Thank you. Question four, and mm -hmm. just under four minutes left. We're talking about people who are really trying hard to grow their business and to serve more people. Yep. What would you say are the the mistakes, the efforts that be, that they typically make that just are never going to work? That that some of our folks listening to this might be able to avoid. 
uh, they realize too late that they need to sell. They go out and they buy a sales book designed for sales pits at larger corporations, and it drives them crazy. So right. what they do is they decide that they have to adapt a coffee is for closers mentality and an always be selling functionality and they absolutely don't that's too far apart from your giving nature plus right. your clients and prospects are going to get whiplash when this muppet shows up as a shark <laughs> folks i told you this was going to be fun let's uh... <laughs> muppet shows up as a shark and it just doesn't feel right for them right they just try, no. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to twist it's my ethics out of quick, my personality out of right yeah. it's weird it's totally weird yeah it's just it just doesn't sit right so mm -hmm. let's flip it let's talk about something people yeah. can do question five is one valuable mm -hmm. free action i like a step in the right direction not going to solve yep. the whole problem but it might help mm -hmm. people to get started two and a half minutes left one one top tip the number one piece of sales training that I absolutely hate is the school of thought that you should argue away objections. Objections are just people's misunderstanding expressed, right? So what I want you to do instead is I want you to lean into objections, take it as an opportunity to prove value more deeply to get to know your client better, serve them longer if you need to, give them more time. But I want you to lean in to objections instead of arguing the objections. If we argue right. the objection, we say your experience is invalid here. Don't right. do that. People need to feel so, empowered in order to purchase. So, so you're going to, so instead of trying to bat away the objection with here's all the reasons why you are wrong and that objection is invalid. Right. No. You're leaning into it. Right? Not, look, understand more about that. I understand that, that that's a, in, yes, I understand that's an investment for you. I understand you have other deciders involved. Maybe I haven't been clear enough yet on what you're receiving or how I'm different than my competitors. Would you like me yeah. to illuminate that? Lean in, lean in y'all, yeah. lean into them. And that's actually a question I had when I was in a similar situation to you. So I can understand why you might have that. Let's, let's yeah. unpack that. Empathy. So question, and we've got whopping one minute left. Question number six, we got it. free resource. Where can we send people to that can find out more about the coach who would not sell? The Coach Who Will Not Sell is a strategy novella written like a 1960s noir movie with a workbook on top of it to save you from this toxic hell. All you have to do, it's free, is go to sellcoachsell.com and use the special code Tom sent me. Thank you. So it's Sell, sell coach, coach sell, sell dot com. Com. Use, use the, the code special code tom tom T -O -M, sent if me. you don't know how to spell that sent <laughs> me and you'll be able to unlock those secrets fantastic 25 mm -hmm. seconds left what's the one question i should have asked you but did not the number one question you should have asked me and did not is is selling manipulative and is it and the answer is yes selling is <laughs> manipulative but it's not manipulative without consent if you read a great book watch a great tv show you're gonna laugh you're gonna cry you're gonna do that with your consent selling is the exact same exactly. way we need them to Perfect. feel but never against their consent Done. Annie p ruggles thanks a million been great thanks for checking out our marketing the invisible podcast if you like what we're doing here please head over to itunes to subscribe rate us and leave us a review it's very much appreciated and if you want to generate five fresh leads in just five hours then check out www. 5hourchallenge.com